So I have a passion for uh, collective intelligence. And I guess in uh, this very room, we all have a passion for that because what do we look for? You know, we try to build new collectives that emerge um, with some kind of new technologies that can support that, also new social agreements. So we try, you know, by doing startups or trying to build new currencies or uh, new social codes, we try to build new collectives that can uh, evolve and that can uh, show uh, more capacities that uh, become smarter than before. And so we can try to make society smarter by, than before. Um, so collective intelligence has evolved from a concept into a science, a social science, a social engineering science. And I like this definition, you know, when we, we try to, to see um, a collective intelligence as, you know, a group of individuals, and from that, we try to build a collective, a startup, something like that, a society, a region. However, um, when we try to build the we's out of the I, I think we still do miss one side of the equation, the invisible part. And I feel absolutely passionate about this question. How does uh, the we plays in the I? You see, in this very moment, I speak to you in English, a language. A language is, uh, comes as a collective tool, right? And I could speak French or Chinese, but every language goes from the collective through me. And it has a worldview in it. It has a way to map reality. And it covers a, a small portion of reality. You know, you have a whole array of reality that we don't even see because we don't have words for that. So here comes an example of a collective tool that I use in this very moment. And because I speak English in this very moment, I perpetuate a worldview that this language has. And if I spoke Spani Spanish or Chinese, I would do the same. I also use uh, specific social codes. Social codes don't exist randomly. Every social code we have, the, say, the way we say hi, uh, the way we speak to one another, they have a reason for existing, and they perpetuate the we, the collective, through the I. So I see in the world you know, many amazing people doing amazing projects, startups, businesses, new societies, and so on, and they don't address how the collective plays inside themselves, and they perpetuate that unconsciously. So I would like to share uh, in a more concrete way what it means, because this research has transformed me into my own lab. I try to see how unconsciously I remain myself like a fish in the fishbowl, or I stay in the matrix. I may innovate inside this matrix, but I do stay in the matrix. And I decided to question every single aspect of the collective that flows inside myself. And to become more concrete, I would like to share uh, two examples of what I have chosen to transform into my life. And I feel a little bit, um, I feel some emotion sharing that because uh, it leads to very, a very personal journey and I, I share that for the first time. Um, so I will start with my first example around ontology. You know, this big word just says how we map reality with words, with language. And you may have not noticed, but I don't, speak very um, I don't speak common English to you right now. I speak another form of English that we call E prime. Have you heard about that? I know at least one guy here <laughs> has heard about that because he practices that too. It means you speak without the verb to be. You don't use the verb to be. If I spoke in French, I would not use the verb être. Why, why would we do such a you know, silly thing. Why did I take out the verb to be from my language? Well, let me take an example. If I say, um, oh, Eric, Eric is, is so shy. Eric is so shy. Well, first, I, didn't, I don't leave you any choice. Eric is like that. I don't, I don't bother whether you may have a different experience. Second, when I say Eric is so shy, I take myself out of the equation. I don't have the awareness that I do build. I do have a responsibility for what I perceive as an observer, right? I take myself out of the, of the equation and I impose something to you. Now, what if I say, oh, I met Eric yesterday and I found him shy. 
You see the difference? I take responsibility for myself as an observer from my point of view, my perspective, and then I can share with you what my feeling became about this man. And also, I acknowledge that you may have a different experience, and I acknowledge myself that maybe tomorrow, in another circumstance, Eric will have a different behavior. And you see, I deactivate a very violent structure into language that I push all the time by imposing things where I, I, I have the illusion that I don't play part of the equation. Now, I do that through E prime in English and F prime in French. And, you know, in different languages, we may have different things to do in order to evolve our language. My point here, what I want to share, I want to share that if we want to evolve societies, if we want to evolve collectives, then we have things that we do, like building a startup, building a business, building you know, new technologies, and we also want to address the collectives that plays through us and that we perpetuate. Language comes as a very, very powerful example. And not just about you know, to be or not to be, but about lots of um, structures in language that we have. One last thing about the verb to be. You know, I, I named one example of taking responsibility for my perception and building nonviolent communication out of that. Another example, uh, another fact about uh, leaving the verb to be. You see, when I use a sentence, let's say, oh, I was in Paris yesterday, and we were so happy about the weather, and I met this guy who is an engineer in this company, for instance. To be, to be, to be. To be, not to be, to be, not to be, to be, not to be. See my point? I become binary. I start to map the world through a binary thinking because to be or not to be, one or zero, on and off, switch on, switch off. And so I develop what we call an Aristotelian thinking of the world. Does it map reality that changes all the time? Of course not, it doesn't. So here I came with a, a first example. The second example I would like to share about changing things in my own life, changing, shifting the we in my own life. Uh, I do it in the economy. I do it in many other spaces, but here's a, here, here comes an example. You will <laughs> listen to me that I still make mistakes about to be because I started a year ago and it takes quite some training, believe me, to deactivate such profound things you know, in education, in our language structure. Okay, so I may say the verb to be a few times. Economy. If I say economy, I bet most of you in this room think um, market economy, right? But what about gift economy? Well, maybe it also um, has a place in the whole economy here, right? So market economy, what does it really mean? Well, it means that I give you something at the condition that you give me something back, market. We negotiate, and that thing that comes back can come in the form of money, or something else, but we, we both agree that it has equivalence, reciprocity, okay? So market economy means reciprocity. I give something, I receive something back, and we both agree on that. Well, on the gift economy, things play a little more in a more complex way, because I may give something, like I may help my neighbor to fix his roof, and he will, you know, help the kids in this other house to do their homework, and this other neighbor will, you know, uh, offer some fruits from his garden, and something will also come back to me. I don't know when. I don't know how. I have no idea about the quantity of that. So, from a systems perspective, um, the gift economy, you can look at it as, as an asymmetrical economy, whereas... The market economy, you can see it as a symmetrical economy. What advantages can we see in the gift economy? Why do we feel so found about the gift economy? Well, for this very reason that wealth can flow everywhere without the need of this condition of reciprocity. Follow me on that? You don't need reciprocity for wealth to flow. It means you switch off, you deactivate something that slows down the market a lot, that slows down the economy a lot. Because if I can give and I know I will receive what I need, if I can give what I can give and I, if I receive what I need to receive, then things become much more valuable here. Now, 
The thing about market economy, uh, I mean the, the gift economy, you cannot do it, or you could not do it at a, at a massive scale in the past. You could only do it at the family level, at the village level, but when it comes to the level of society, is then, well, we had to invent the market economy, the one that we know, okay? So, enough for the theory. I decided to go in the gift economy just to explore the impact that it has for myself as a person, as an I in the we, but also the impact that it has inside the we, and inside a we that um, plays the market economy all the time. <laughs> and so, I, I remember, you know, those first times uh, when I spoke about that, my friend said, you will just die out of that. You won't survive. People will suck your blood. You live in a, in a place where you need to fight for your money. You need to earn a living. Earn a living. Look how violent this, li this feels, right? Well, two and a half years after, I still stand in front of you alive. And I won't say that I have an easy experience, a tough experience. However, the advantages that I have out of that became amazing. And I would like to share that with you. But first, you know, I remember the first day I went to this, uh, one of those big CEOs, because I, I do a lot of things with big companies. And he asked me, well, can you help us, you know, do our strategy for the next five years? And uh, we discussed, and I asked him, well, what projects do you have for humanity? Because I will help you only if, in whatever we do, we don't find any losers. Nobody will lose. The environment won't lose. The market won't lose. Your customers won't lose. No one, your, your employees won't lose. Everyone will win. A win, 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 win thing. Okay. So he agreed. And he said, how much do you charge for that? Well, I said, I don't charge. I'll offer my time and whatever I can offer you. He could <laughs> hardly understand what I meant. But then we do the thing together. And we have an amazing experience. And first experience, then I realized that by playing in the gift economy, what we ask for one another, the level of kindness that we need to offer one another Become much high, much becomes much higher than if I played in the market economy. So we had the capacity to bond and to build a collective like never before. And so far, this CEO has moved to another company today, and we still do things with other people. So you see, shifting in the gift economy, I can see the consequences, how it shifts a new reality a new social reality inside myself, to a level that I can hardly explain right now uh, in this very moment. I, I, th I guess I would need more time and more experience. But one thing that I can say, it, it led me also to another time. You see, in the market economy, if I use conventional money to buy and sell things, what do I do? Well, I know what I will do next week. Next week or tomorrow I'll go buy some bread. Next week, I'll go buy a car. I will work for the next two years to earn money and buy something. So it goes this way. And you make very predictable assumptions in time. When you live in the gift economy, you don't. You relate to providence. You relate to a non-linear time where you need to feel, to buy yourself, an intelligence of flows. You don't play with linear time anymore. However, when you look back and you look everything you have accomplished through the gift economy, then you say, well, if I had done that in the classical way, I could not have done it you know, by strategizing. So, to conclude, my invitation here, whatever you do in the new business, Whatever new collectives you try to build, you know, adding eyes to create we's, please never, never forget that uh, the we also plays in the eye, that you operate inside the matrix. And if you feel like changing the matrix, then you have, you do want to address that inside yourself. Uh, it will look like quite a journey for you. Some people, you know, your friends may not understand what it means. Uh, quite an adventure but you will never, never lose doing that. So thank you very much. Thank you.